Hey folks, Thomas Went back with you again for Drum Factory Direct. This is part of our ongoing series on some of just the basic fundamentals of playing jazz music on the drum set. This is our third lesson, and today we are going to be focusing in on the all-important ride cymbal beat. Probably one of, if not the most important aspect of playing this music on the drums. Now, it's a very, very personal thing playing the ride cymbal, and the beat that we all use today sort of developed throughout the course of the music's history. And in the late 1930s, earliest 1940s, drummers went from playing the time on the snare drum and the hi-hat over to a top cymbal or a ride cymbal, what it's most commonly called today. And it's a very, very personal thing. You can tell all of the great drummers in this music just by how they play the cymbal. You don't really need to hear them play anything else. That's how personal it is. Now the basic beat that we use is really fairly simple. Sticking in basic 4-4 time for now, it's simply a quarter note followed by a dotted eighth, then a sixteenth note, another quarter note followed by another dotted eighth and sixteenth note. So if we play it very, very slowly on just the cymbal, it sounds something like this. Now that might sound and look pretty simple, but there's a lot more that goes into playing the ride cymbal than just playing that simple pattern over and over again. Remember, this is all about feel and sound. What kind of feeling are you generating out of the cymbal and what kind of sound are you getting out of the cymbal? Okay? And in addition to that, you want to make sure that your cymbal beat is consistent and consistent over all dynamic ranges. Whether you're playing pretty loud or very, very soft and anything in between, you want your beat to be consistent. You want your cymbal beat to have a good weight to it. Not that it's heavy and plodding, we don't want that, but you want your beat to have meaning, if that makes sense. Now, if you're brand new to this, if you've never played any music like this before, the way that I would suggest you start working on it is get your metronome out and set it to a nice slow tempo, similar to the one I just demonstrated at, and just play along with your metronome, just that basic beat until that starts to feel comfortable. After that feels comfortable at that slow tempo, then add your hi-hat nice and strong on beats two and four, and if you can, add your bass drum on all four beats at a nice light feathering volume, just like we talked about in the last lesson. Now there are a lot of ways after you get comfortable with the basic pattern and you can play it consistently, there are a lot of different ways that you can work on your cymbal beat and develop it. Personally, I really learned how to do this by practicing with recordings. All of the classic recordings in the jazz canon featuring all manner of the great masters. That's how I would, I would suggest that you work on it. Now recently, I had the chance to talk with the great modern day master Lewis Nash and I asked him how he developed his cymbal beat. And this is just some of what he had to say. Check this out. I used to just set up a ride cymbal only, and I would play along with Jimmy Cobb uh, on the Miles Davis recordings, like Live at the Black Hawk, um, uh, the Kind of Blue, of course, anything that had Jimmy Cobb, because I, there was something about the feel that he had that I was trying to emulate at that time mm -hmm. and so um i felt like if i could capture that part it was that that prominent aspect of keeping time on the drum set and jazz then all the other stuff would come I, I could get that but that feeling that happens on that symbol is is what oftentimes gets people phone calls for gigs <laughs> yeah it's true at least, at least from our chair in the, in the jazz situation so um, that's one thing. And not only Jimmy Cobb, I did it with, with Kenny Clark. Um, I did it with um, Philly Joe, with, with Max. Just just checking out how the master drummers, Roy Haynes, what, what they were doing. The, the subtle differences in their approach to um, timekeeping on a cymbal. And those subtle differences would have to do with touch, would have to do with spacing, would have to do with... Um, that kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. and so, um, and then I would experiment with where on the symbol 
in terms of pl where you place the bead while you're keeping time. Uh, where on the cymbal allowed me to um, hear the sound back in a way that I liked hearing it back. So, I mean, so I was experimenting with those kind of sonic things early on. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily a technique thing. It, it is in a way, but I was really checking out what the sound that was coming back at me and how that, how I um, could compare that to the sound I was hearing coming from these records of these great players who I like. Okay, so after you've gotten comfortable playing this basic pattern on the cymbal, along with the hi-hat on two and four, and a nice light feathering bass drum on all four beats, after you get comfortable with that, you can begin to start to vary the rhythm that you use on the cymbal. Now this is where the real artistry comes in, because this is when you can sort of interject your personal style into just playing the cymbal. Now, I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to give you an example by starting out just playing that basic pattern, and then I'm going to vary it just a little bit. Check this out. Okay, I hope you could see and hear the difference between just the basic pattern and then when I was varying it. This has a lot of power within the music. The way you phrase that cymbal beat can have a really profound effect on the rest of the group that you're playing with and therefore the overall effect of the music the group you're playing in is having on the audience. Now to give you guys more of a real world and actual performance example, Here's a clip from a gig that I played recently. Check this out. Okay, I hope that gave you guys a little bit more insight into what I've been talking about during this lesson. Now, at the beginning of the lesson, I mentioned that playing the ride cymbal is a very personal thing, and it really is. And I think the only way that all of us find our voice and our personal style playing this cymbal is by listening to all of the greats that have come before us, men and women who really developed this music and created this entire style. By listening to them, by playing along with their recordings, we really will be able to develop not only a good feel and a good sound, but ultimately our own way of doing it. Never be afraid of those influences. Influences are leading you to your personal style. But it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. And you really got to be in it for the long haul. You know, I remember way back in 1997, I think it was, December of that year, I had the great experience of listening to the Grandmaster Billy Higgins, now the late great Grandmaster Billy Higgins, at the Village Vanguard in New York City. He was playing with Jackie McLean, Cedar Walton, and David Williams. And I was sitting very close to him, right up on that back red bench in the drummer's seat, as it's known, at the Vanguard. And Master Higgins had the entire band just levitating, all from the feeling of his symbol. The sound and feeling of his symbol was just all through the music. And it was really one of the most joyous and uplifting experiences that I've ever had. And I think of that experience all the time. And I think about the feeling that he produced from his symbol and how that affected the music. We have a lot of power and influence in this music when we play it. And we want to make sure that we're influencing the music in a really good, positive, and beautiful way. 
And I think the way to do that is to listen to these great masters, to play along with their recordings, and to not be afraid to be influenced by them. It's a really, really wonderful journey. It takes a long time, but it's worth every, every bit of your effort. And hopefully one day, both you and I will be able to have the same kind of wonderful influence over the music that Master Higgins had way back in 1997. So until then, please continue to listen to this music, play along with these great masters, and as always, stay safe and stay close to the music. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much.